everybody, and welcome to my channel. This is Northwest Small Batch Brewing. I am Steven, and uh, today's video, as the description said, is a video about what I feel is the most common off flavor you can get when you're making beer. What causes it? How to fix it? Can you fix it? Uh, so we'll get into all that, but before we get started, uh, this channel is all about home brewing and all the different steps of brewing, and if you're into that kind of thing, uh, it would be great if you could do that YouTube thing and look down and hit the subscribe button. Uh, it helps the channel out and it keeps me motivated to keep putting out new videos every week. <clears throat> so, before I get started here, I'm going to pour a beer. This is uh, Deschutes, one of my favorite brewing uh, companies. Uh, this is the Little Squeezy Juicy Pale Ale. Um, it's sort of like a New England, I'm assuming, because it's a juicy. Um, I don't know. Anyway, it's not very hazy though, is it? <clears throat> I've had it before. It's pretty good. It's it's uh, sort of pineapple-y sort of flavor. Anyway, let's get started. So I would say the most common heard about off flavor for beer and brewing is diacetyl. The funny thing about that is I've never had an issue with diacetyl in all my years of brewing. And the reality is I think that, that it is super rare that anybody has an issue with that. I do have a video, if I can find it, I'll put a link up here for my diacetyl video uh, if you wanna see it. But it's super rare, I think. I've, I just don't ever see it happen. Um, and I don't know why it's talked about like it's like this super common issue. For me, what I think is far more common is what a lot of people who are not into home brewing call the homebrewed taste of beer. So sometimes somebody will drink your beer and they'll say, well, I don't like homebrews because they have a homebrewed taste or it tastes like a homebrew. What does that mean? Well, there's a particular off flavor that causes, um, well, let's just get into it. It causes a, a, for some people, it's a green apple flavor. For some people, it's just like an unri underripe apple. Uh, for me, it's a cidery taste, like a dry cider sort of taste. And then for some, it actually smells or tastes like freshly cut pumpkin. Uh, I think the most common though is the cidery taste, the dry cidery taste that you get and smell from it. It's called, um, uh, Assel, Assel, Ass, I knew I was going to mess this up. I can never pronounce it. Uh, acetyl, right? Acetyl, no, acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde. I think that's right. I'll put it up on the screen and I'll probably mispronounce it again a few more times. Um, this is, in my opinion, the most common off flavor you find in homebrew. So I told you what it smells like, which means that probably you now know you've had it in your homebrew if you're a homebrewer because you'll go, oh yeah, yeah, I've smelled that or I've tasted that, I know exactly what that is. Heck, I taste it all the time in um, craft brews and I've gone to um, restaurants where I've actually turned beers back in and said, you know, sorry, but this was not, you know, somebody needs to quality test these because that's not good. Uh, it doesn't hurt you or anything, it just isn't very, you know, pleasant to drink. Um, so, what causes it? Well, the cause is um, when your alcohol, specifically the ethanol that's produced in your beer becomes oxidized. An off product is this acetaldehyde. Acetyl acetaldehyde. <laughs> See, I said I'd do it again. Uh, so, so, what causes it? Well, the same thing that causes um, um, other off flavors basically is stressed yeast. In one manner or another, the yeast is stressed and it causes this, this off flavor. Um, so what can we do to make sure the yeast is not stressed? Well, lots of things. First of all, let's talk about oxygenating your wort. Uh, sometimes you'll still see people using these uh, pure oxygen tanks and an oxygen uh, uh, stone that they put in that's too much. It's too much. It's a gimmick. It's not needed. Oh man, there's a hair in my beer. I think I might have got it. Oh well. What are you going to do? It's probably mine anyway. 
Yeah, so don't you don't want to over aerate your beer. That can cause uh, off flavors like this uh, to happen. So I, I generally would say, I mean, I'm all for new products and gimmicks and toys, but using an uh, oxygenated, oxy, pure oxygen tank to oxygenate your beer is just not needed. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. You pour your beer from kind of high, higher up into the fermenter if you can, so that it splashes what's going in. Uh, or if you have a system with a pump, you can use the pump to, you know, force the, 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 the beer into the fermenter at a harder speed. Uh, and then last, you put a top on the, the, you know, fermenter. And if it's too heavy, if you're doing like five and a half gallons or whatever, you can usually turn it sort of on its angle, on its side, and rock it. So you don't have to pick it up and shake it, just rock it. And, and make sure you do that for like a minute. I know it seems like a long time, but a, a lot of people, uh, the, the issue is they, they aren't doing it long enough. So really aerate, but don't go over, don't use a, a, like an aeration stone and pure oxygen. That'll be too much. Um, what else can you do? Um, yeast um, count. So if you have a normal, um, a normal sort of uh, beer, like say, it's hard to put a number on it, but in my mind, I'd say up to like six and a half percent. Then you just want to use one packet of dry yeast. And uh, I don't really use liquid yeast, but you, I'm sure it's just like one, uh, you, you have to do starters and stuff with the liquid yeast. So I don't want to talk about that because I just don't have that experience, but you want extra, you want just a, your normal amount of yeast. Anytime you have a higher gravity beer, in my opinion, that's going to be like six and a half percent or more you need to consider two packets of yeast because one is not enough and it will stress the yeast if you're not putting enough of the colony in, uh, it will start stressing and causing off flavors. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, what else? Um, pitching your yeast into warp that's too warm and then cooling it down to your fermenting temperature will also cause off flavors like this because you're stressing the yeast. Yeast does not like changes, especially rapid changes in temperature. Like when you lager a beer, you do it very slowly, like a one degree a day. It's very slow and deliberate. So do, if you're, the, best, the best advice is when you pitch your yeast, make sure your beer is at the temperature you want it to be at for fermenting when you pitch the yeast. Um, what else? Adding um, simple sugars. So if you add additional like table sugar to your beer. I've seen people do this because they're not getting the gravity numbers they want and they think they can just fix it by adding uh, sugar in and that'll up the, the gravity. Yeah, it'll up the gravity, but it's just gonna give you more alcohol without adding any flavor or body or anything to the beer. It's strictly just adding um, uh, more um, alcohol, basically. And so the problem is yeast generally does not like to feast on pure sugar. So my advice is if you can, uh, let the beer ferment for a day before you add the sugar. It'll be, it'll be a bigger colony and better able to handle it without stressing it. But if you're, you know, doing something like Belgian candy sugar, like a dark Belgian candy sugar, which is one of my few uh, things where I'll say you could use sugar because that does have that caramelized flavor. Um, just make sure you add a lot, uh, enough yeast nutrient to help feed the yeast uh, and that will help as well. Um, sometimes the yeast is good to do what's called the swirl where you sort of take your fermenter after it's been a couple of weeks of fermenting and you gently, and I want to stress gently, sort of rock it just to get the yeast at the bottom to re-incorporate uh, into your, into your um, ferment, fermented beverage. Um, because, you know, as it, hits, it, it collects on the bottom, uh, it can reinvigorate it a little bit and just help it reabsorb any off flavors. Uh, again, you don't want to add any oxygen at that point, so don't shake it, don't stir it. I'm talking about just what I call a swirl. It's just a very gentle movement uh, to try to get the yeast sort of to move. It's very soft, so it, it's very easy for it to sort of mix back in. Um, so what else? Um, how can we fix it? Well, 
except for all the other you know reasons that you do ahead of time just to make sure you have a healthy yeast um, the only way I've heard of to fix it and I don't know if this works because I've never tried it but I've heard what you could do is put a um, uh, uh, now I'm drawing a blank uh, you uh, what's these tablets uh, Campton you can get a Campton tablet that usually is used to remove oxygen put a crushed up uh, Campton tablet in, when you're kegging it and then over the next period of say two or three days just purge your keg every now and then so what what should happen is it's gonna help remove all that oxidized um, matter and smell out of the beer and then you release it out when you pull the pull the uh, plug on the keg like I said I've never tried it I've just read uh, that that is a potential way to fix this issue um, I feel like I'm missing something with the with the yeast um, you know stress and, and things that you can do um, I guess not just that the only other thing that I, I did also read about is that uh, you can also cause this problem with a yeast starter so if you're doing like liquid yeast and you have a yeast starter um, that can also cause Several, not just this one. It actually actually cause several off flavors in your beer. Another reason why I prefer dry yeast because um, liquid liquid yeast. There's not much you can do about that except to make sure that you have a really good strong initial colony of yeast. At any rate, uh, acetaldehyde. That should be on your mind as far as the most common off flavor, and. Um, Knowing what it is and what causes it, you now can make sure that all the steps you take throughout your fermentation are purposely done to make sure your stress doesn't or your yeast doesn't get stressed out, which would cause that off flavor in the first place. If you do get that cidery off flavor, you could try putting in uh, the Campton tablet and, and seeing if that will, you know, pull off that smell. Um, other than that. I think you're you're sort of you're sort of stuck if 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 it um, if it, ha it happens every now and then. I still have beers that get this off flavor no, no matter how hard you try. So anyway, you do the best and forget the rest, right? So hey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, it's great seeing you. I hope that this helped a little bit and put this particular off flavor on the map uh, so we can be on the lookout for it and uh, do things to avoid getting it in the first place. Uh, I'll have another video out in a week, as always, and uh, thanks for being here. Happy brewing. See you in a week. Cheers. <laughs>